Hello, Sanchez Casal friends. Here we are with one more piece of information, one more advice on the technical pillar. Now that we are in small spaces at home, we can continue improving our technical pillar. We have been talking a lot about the control of the racket, the control with the finger, the control with the wrist, the control with the elbow. And we have done so many progressions. Now that we are in the small space, we can take advantage of the little details so that we can put everything together once we go back to the tennis court. Today, I would like to focus on the movement of the racket just after the contact point. You know, when we are trying to put a shot together, like a forehand or a backhand, there are many stages of the shot. The preparation, how we move our racket back, how we load the shot, how we move up our legs. But today, we are only going to focus on the contact point and the immediate reaction of the racket after the impact. So when we start playing tennis, our main concern is that the ball goes to the other side of the net. We don't care so much about what type of spin the ball has. As we progress, we start getting more worried about giving different spins to the ball so that our opponent doesn't get a nice shot. So the three main, the three main spins that we can give to the ball is the flat shot. That's when the ball goes straight into the other side of the net this doesn't have that much rotation. The top spin, that does when the ball starts rotating a lot, bouncing very high. And the last one is a slice. The ball goes very short, very, very close to the net. And after the bounce, the ball goes actually lower. So now that we are at home, we can focus on what is our racket doing after the point of contact to give this type of effect to the ball. So we would like to start the progression again with our hand because that's a good way to understand what our hand is doing so that we can later transmit it to the racket. So we just have the ball in our hands and usually when we are hitting the ball, the ball goes to the other side with no rotation when the ball goes flat. When we want to give a little bit of top spin, we have to make sure like the ball rotates so our hand goes a little bit like this, waving, and usually we can see the other side of our hand. And finally, when we want the ball to bounce lower, we want to do the slice, our hand goes under the ball. So these are the three types of spins that we can give to the ball. First one, we just go to the side, so the palm of the hand is facing to the outside. The second one, the palm of the hand is facing to the front. And in the last one, the palm of the hand is facing upward. So we can do by doing this on, on the hand, we can understand how to give the, the top spin, for example. This is an exercise that we do a lot in the initiation. We put our hand behind, and then we can start moving the hand up, and you can see how the ball starts rotating. If we would like to do the, the, the shot flat in this exercise, we cannot because we don't have a way to go through the ball. So it's very important that we understand how to, how to teach something, and usually when we do it with our hand, we understand it better. This exercise, we have to be able to see the letter at the end of the shot. It has to be in front of our eyes. We hold the racket with the Easter grip. I know that some of us have already the semi-Western grip, but in order to understand and to manipulate the effects better, right now is a good moment to go to the Easter grip. So in the flat shot, that is the most common shot, the shot that we learn when we are practicing tennis. The, the letter F, we can put it in the front, has to be in the straight in front of our eyes. So we're gonna start by practicing the flat shot. So every single time we have to be able to, to read the letter F. The letter F has to be in front of our eyes. So we use with a regular ball, it can be a softer ball so that we can actually catch it after the bounce. And we catch and throw, catch and throw, catch and hit, catch and hit. So we will start with this simple exercise. We catch with the left hand. We can start very slowly. Every single time our racket is in the front and we are just trying to line the letter in front of our eyes. We can start going a little faster. We are trying to do with the racket, what we're trying to accomplish is just to go all the way to the front and catch the racket, catch the ball, sorry. For the top spin, we will put the little sticker on the top of our racket and we have to be able to, to read it at the end of the shot. So we start again, 
with our standard contact point in front. And at the end of the shot, we have to be able to read the letter T. So we go here. Every time. We can try to move it faster. And as we can see, the faster we move, the more rotation there is with the board. Now for the slice, we're gonna put the sticker here in the bottom of our racket in the bottom of the head of our racket on the other side opposite to the top spin so we have the flat we have the top spin and now we're gonna practice the slice contact point the same so we have the face of the racket parallel to the wall and now in the follow through we have to be able to read the s every time As you can see, I, I'm tending, I try to go all the way through, all the way through, so I can really read the letter. Stickers on our racket, we can start practicing a progression. We can go flat, top spin, slice, and every time we have to read a different letter. So that means like we are moving the hand in the right direction just after the point of contact. So we will start with the flat, now you see the difference, move with the racket, and now we go under. So we go behind, on top, and under. Behind, on top, and under. As you can see, we are doing all the, all the spins that we usually do on a tennis court. We are putting more emphasis on the movement of the racket. So we also can practice this with the opposite hand. When we have a two-hander backhand, usually we have trouble controlling the opposite hand. We tend only to go on one direction, and this is a good opportunity to teach the hand how to go on top of the ball, also how to go behind the ball, try to stand forward, and it's a good opportunity. For the ones that have one-hander backhand, we can do also the opposite. We just have to switch the tickets on the opposite direction, and we can really practice the same the same spins that we are doing on the opposite track. We took the time to do the progression sitting down my chair very slowly, starting to feel the different shapes that we are giving to the ball after the point of contact. So it's time to stand up. Even though we have a small space, we can start using slowly trying to feel what the racket does after the contact. So we're going to start just with the flat shot and we can do repetitions, 10 repetitions on the flat shot, 10 repetitions on the top spin, 10 repetitions on the slice, and then we can start mixing them. I want to start just going slowly with the flat shot. So as you can see, I always try to point forward with the racket. And then after five or six, I'm going to start changing. So the shape of my racket now is different. I start going on top of the ball with my strings. And finally, I go under, 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 and now it's time to mix. So I go here, I go here, and I go here. Flat, top spin, slice, top spin, slice, slice, flat. And if we want to make it even more interesting, more difficult, and we count with someone, at home, your dad, your sister, your brother, we can have someone telling you the instruction. We can, he can tell you the clue like T, F, S, and each letter can represent one, one, one different spin. So in this, in this case, we can start T, with T, and we go top spin, F, now we go flat, S, and now we go under, T, T, flat. Yes. Yes. As you can see, I always have to be paying attention. And if I am able to react and go under when he's telling me a slice, instead of going on top of the ball, that's exactly what is going to happen on the tennis court. The ball is going to bounce lower instead of bouncing against your opponent. And when you want to get the top spin, the ball is really going to bounce a little higher. So these little details are going to help you to be more effective. 
It's not that you are discovering something new, it's that you are improving what you already know by putting a little bit of detail on the control of the racket. So all the progression that we have been doing with the finger that allows to move the racket in different shapes, the elbow in the front, which allows to have the contact and the control of the contact point. And now that we are working a little bit on the follow through after the contact, then we can become more effective controlling all these different spins. So now we are lucky enough to have just a bigger space, a little more space. We can use that extra space to get a better feeling on the follow through. Just a little more extension of the arm. You see when we were in the small space, it's difficult to get all the way across, all the way to the center. The way we were doing in the beginning, when I was sitting on the chair and I was catching the ball, trying to make sure I was able to read all the stickers that I put in my racket. Now that I go to the bigger space, you can gonna start to see how I really gonna be able to get all the way across. We start working with the flat shot. I had to be able to read my sticker there, and then I go with the top spin. I go twice. All the way to the front. All the way to the front. Top spin. Slide. Slide. Top spin. Slide. Slide. And you can entertain yourself for many minutes. But why, why, why is important the point of contact? Why are we putting so much emphasis on the use, remembering to contact the ball in the front, always to have the elbow in the front, what we do with the racket after the point of contact? It's important that we understand that when we're playing tennis, there are more things involved. It's the preparation, the movement, how to arrive to the ball on time. Also, sometimes when we start playing tennis, we don't have enough power. So we have the right technique, but we start trying to aim for more, trying to get more power. And some, sometimes we start getting the, the power from the backswing. So when we start just pulling the racket too far behind, we start losing the perception of the contact point, the idea of contact point. So we start hitting the ball a little bit late, and then we start doing something different with our swings. We start getting involved the elbow, we start the follow through start becoming different every time. So it's a good moment right now that we are at home and we have a small space to emphasize a lot the point of contact. Okay, to summarize all what we have seen in this video, it's very important to go very slowly. It's very important that we take the time to really see what's happening with our racket after the contact. So we have to do it slowly. We have to feel like we have control of where the racket is moving, not paying so much attention of hitting many balls in a row. These exercises are meant to really feel what the racket is doing after, so that you can see the different shapes that you are giving to the ball and how it's possible to give these shapes. How is the racket going under in the slice, on top of the ball for the top spin, and when it goes flat, how it follows the same trajectory that already has behind it.